The city of Patliputra holds a unique place in Indian history because it was the imperial capital of two empires. The first was the Mauryan Empire and the second was the Gupta Empire. But even before the establishment of the Mauryan Empire, the city of Patliputra was the capital of one of the most powerful Mahajanpad of ancient India. That is the Mahajanpad of Magad. But with the decline of the Gupta Empire, the city of Patliputra also declined. And we see that soon, people forgot where this great city of ancient India was situated. In this video, we will talk about how this great city of ancient India was discovered. Our story starts around the mid of 18th century. The Battle of Baksar has happened and with the subsequent Treaty of Allahabad, large portions of Eastern India came under the rule of English East India Company. The English officials who now controlled large portions of the Indian subcontinent became interested in studying Indian history and its culture. One of the main institutions that helped in the study of ancient history was Asiatic Society. The Asiatic Society was founded in 1784 by a person named William Jones. William Jones is an interesting personality because he first came to India as a judge of the newly founded Bengal Supreme Court. But while living in India, he became interested in Indian history and its culture. And he soon started learning Sanskrit, which he described as of a wonderful structure, more perfect than the Greek, more copious than the Latin and more exquisitely refined as either. Besides learning Sanskrit, Jones was also interested in Indian history and he saw a need for an institution that will be dedicated to the study of Indian history and that is how Asiatic society came into existence. When Jones was researching about ancient Indian history, which was not yet fully known, one of his friends suggested that he should first compare the names and the events that are related to India that are found in Greek and Latin sources. For Jones, this was a great idea because he realized that by comparing the Indian text to the Greek and Latin sources, he could construct a credible chronology. So he began studying ancient Western sources. One name which stood out among all of these Western sources was Megasthenes. Megasthenes was a Greek ambassador who traveled to India around 302 BC. While traveling to India, Megasthenes wrote a journal which was called Indica. Although the original text did not survive, there were portions that were available in other Western sources. And from these excerpts, Jones learned that Megasthenes had traveled to the court of an Indian king and this court was situated in the city of Pali Bhotra. Now here was a challenge for Jones. He had to find out where the city of Pali Bhotra was situated and what was the Indian name of Pali Bhotra. Megasthenes had provided some clues. He had said that the city of Pali Bhotra was situated on the confluence of two rivers. The first was Ganges which everybody knew as Ganga. But the second river was Iranibos, which Megasthenes had described as the third largest river in India. Now this was the river which no one knew about. And with this limited information, the search of city of Palibotra began. But William Jones was not the only person that was interested in this search. There were other scholars who began to search about the city of Palibotra. And one such scholar who was an Englishman had suggested that the city of Kannauj was the city which Megasthenes had described. Now, the city of Kannauj had certain advantages when it comes to the disassociation with Palibotra. The city of Kannauj was the ancient capital of Rajputs before the arrival of the Turks and it was also situated on the banks of river Ganga. But there was a problem and this has to do with the second river Iranebos. There was no confluence on which Kannauj was situated. Apart from Kannauj, a French geographer had suggested that the city of Allahabad was the ancient city of Pali Bhotra. Now this claim had also certain advantages. Allahabad was one of the holiest sites of Hindus and it was situated on the confluence of Ganga and Yamuna. But there was a problem because the ancient name of Allahabad was Prayag and there was no similarity between the name Prayag 
and the name Pali Botra. Now, when we look at both of these claims, whether we talk about Kannauj and whether we talk about Allahabad, both of them had certain disadvantages and neither fit completely in the description which Megasthenes had provided. But there was also a third claim. This was presented by an Englishman named James Rennell. James Rennell is quite a big personality in the history of cartography in India because he was the first person who constructed a nearly accurate map of India. And when it comes to the search for Palibotra, Rennell initially supported the claim that Kannauj was Palibotra. But while doing his research, he came across the description of Palibotra that was provided by the Greek geographer Pliny. Pliny in his description says that the city of Palibotra was situated some 425 Roman miles downstream from the confluence of Ganga and Yamuna. Now this was the detail which other scholars had overlooked. With this information, Rennell began his own search for Palibotra. What he had to do was, he had to measure the distance of 425 Roman miles from the confluence of Ganga and Yamuna, which was already known and that was Allahabad. Now one Roman mile is around 1400 meters. And when Rennell measured this distance, he realized that this was somewhere around the city of Patna. But Rennell knew that the city of Patna was not situated on the confluence of any river and it was also not built on any ancient city. So he began his inquiries and in his inquiry, he found out that there was a local tradition that claims that there was once a city named Patel Putar. And this city was the city on which modern Patna today stood. This was a critical information because the name Patel Putar is quite similar to Pali Bhotra. But there was still the question of the confluence of two rivers. The answer to this riddle came when Renel was tasked to conduct a geological survey in company's territory. In his survey, Renel found that just below the modern city of Patna, there existed a dry river bed that once joined the river Ganga. This was the river bed of river Son. This river now had moved some 22 miles away from the city of Patna. Having collected all of these information, Renel was now convinced that the city of Patna was the city of Palibotra. And that is what he wrote in his accounts. Now, when William Jones read these accounts, he too became convinced of this theory. William Jones, while reading ancient Indian text, came across the mention of a city named Patliputra. And he realized that the name Patliputra is quite similar to the local name of Patna, which was Patel Putar. And he realized that Patliputra could be the modern city of Patna. But there was still the problem of River Son. The name Son has no similarity with the name Iranebos, which Megasthenes had provided. And William Jones knew that in order to be 100% sure that the city of Palibotra or Patliputra was the modern day city of Patna, he had to find some relation between Iranebos and river Son. The answer to this puzzle came when William Jones was translating a Sanskrit text called Mudra Rakshas. Now, this is a coincidence because Mudra Rakshas is a Sanskrit play that talks about how Chanakya and Chandragupta founded the modern empire. And in this text, William Jones found that river Son had an epithet and this epithet was Hiranyabahu that is golden armed. And he realized that the term Hiranyabahu and Irenebos is quite similar. With this information, everything became clear. So the city of Palibotra was the city of Patliputra and it was situated in modern day Patna. So this is how the city of Patliputra was discovered. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you found this video informative, please like the video. Thank you for watching.